You're watching Force 13's live streaming service. This is Force 13 Live coverage on a Hurricane Dorian on the right hand side of your screen and mainly Typhoon Kajiki but on the left hand panel now we're going to be showing you all kinds of other things that are going on around the world such as on the left hand side right now Tropical Depression 12E which has just formed. National Hurricane Center uh, should be doing their update as of um, 5 p.m. right now and the update is that the storm is stronger back to 110 miles per hour and a pressure of 961 millibars you heard that here the storm Dorian has strengthened slightly and is still on track for potentially striking the coast of South Carolina that's why we're back live here um, so that's the latest from National Hurricane Center and they have also issued a storm surge warning extending it northward to Poquason, Virginia including Hampton Roads. That's a storm surge warning. Tropical storm warning has been issued from the North Carolina Virginia border to Chincoteague, Virginia and for the Chesapeake Bay from Smith Point southward. They were all under a tropical storm watch earlier and now a tropical storm watch has been issued from north of Chincoteague to Fenwick Island, Delaware and for the Chesapeake Bay from Smith Point to Drum Point and for the tidal Potomac River south of Cobb Island. A storm surge warning and tropical storm warning have been discontinued south of the Flagler Volusia County line. So the warnings continue to shift north as we track Hurricane Dorian. My name's Nathan Foy. I'm joined in this hour by Sam. How are you tonight? I am doing fantastic. A little uh, with a little a little busy as well. Um, but since it didn't seem like there was anybody else that could uh, help help us take the. Uh, initiative on the stream tonight. Uh, I will try my best to fill in and get the information out when necessary. All right. Well, as always, we're here to take your questions tonight. Um, we have sort of shifted gears on our coverage to show you more of what's going on around the world because, believe it or not, there are about how many systems? I think there were eight tropical cyclones and ten actual systems, um, which include you know things that could form. It's pretty crazy. Yes. Uh, there's our schedule, by the way. We're, our plan for tonight: live discussion for this hour, tropical weather bulletin at 8 p.m. on the channel, another live discussion to follow at 9 p.m. Eastern time, and then an update on Dorian once again at 11 p.m. tonight and at 9 a.m. tomorrow, as has been the case in recent days. Um, so it's all going on at the minute. Dorian is on the, on the right hand panel, that image isn't going anywhere so you can get to see it the whole night through. I thought it was just going to disappear on me just then but there it is uh, once more. Um, it has looked much better today hasn't it Sam? Uh, yes indeed although the it has been from what I've seen it has been trying to it has been really been making great strides to restrength to restrengthen possibly back even back to major status but uh, it looks like uh, from from what I've found er, from what I've heard of earlier today that we've not really uh, there's uh, recon hasn't really found any direct signs of strengthening um, they haven't really seen much of uh, pressure uh, any deep in any pressure uh, lower any lowering of pressure but this storm nonetheless is still going to remain dangerous especially along the coast uh, wind gusts up to 
uh, when it made its when it's made, when it made its closest pass to Jacksonville, uh, we, they've been reporting wind gusts of over sixty miles an hour. Um, the uh, tropical storm Fernand has weakened to a depression at this time, so that is no longer producing tropical storm force winds. You saw it on the imagery just a moment ago. I don't know why Gabrielle isn't working at the minute. We'll try and get onto that, but it is just me and Sam here, and I'm working all the graphics on our screen whilst trying to talk to you at the same time. Uh, lovely. Fernand down to 35 miles an hour. All warnings lifted. Um, pressure 1,005, so I don't think we're going to be talking much more about Fernand, but it could still deliver another or up to 6 to 12 inches of rainfall in parts of Mexico, isolated amounts of 18, greatest amounts in the Sierra Madre Oriental. This rainfall may cause life-threatening flash floods and mudslides in northern Nuevo Leon and southern Coahuila, 2 to 5 inches. And in Texas, rainfall amounts could reach 3 inches, with isolated storm totals of 6. Um, from what I've heard from Isaac, who is another of our members, uh, it is mainly beneficial rainfall, so that sounds decent. Um, Ling yes. Ling is much stronger today. We've got our estimate of 120 miles per hour, which would make it a Category 3. Um, I think we must have brushed past it there on that imagery. Let's bring it back. There is the latest imagery of Ling Ling at this time, looking rather impressive with that banding. Um, it's about to reach the southern Ryukyu Islands of Japan, and typhoon warnings are in effect there. There are so many storms going on around the world at this point, and we're here to cover them once again. Yes, especially that we're all that we're just days away from the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season, and pretty much in general, we are at the peak of. Hurricanes. We are at the peak of tropical cyclone season in the northern hemisphere, so uh, it's definitely not. It is not out of the ordinary to see this much activity uh, during this time. Mm. I believe we're also joined now by Orlando. Are you there? Hello. Good evening. Um, you're joining us from New Jersey. Any more worried about Dorian up there? Well, not necessarily. It should be passing. It should be not. It shouldn't hit impact me directly in any way. Maybe, perhaps some breezy conditions and at the shore. Maybe some uh, rain, of course. Maybe rain from the distance or uh, with currents, of course, are always a risk. Types of storms, but outside that. I don't... Yep. And what's the situation? with rainfall up there um would it be beneficial or have you had a lot of rain already and it would be a bad situation well we've honestly this year i'd say we've had enough rain um to last us a very long while there's no uh no at not no conditions of any sort of drought or uh, anomalous dryness in the region so any more rain i'm not sure if it'll i'm not sure it'll definitely i mean depending on how much wood fall I, I doubt it'd be much of a detriment but we've had enough so if any sort of flooding was to happen it'd be not far-fetched to occur especially a widespread area with how much rain we Yep, just to reiterate the information which I'm literally typing in for the bar at the bottom right now, which will update soon. A storm surge warning has been extended up to Pocuson, Virginia, um, and that includes all of the sounds and rivers along the way there from Flag of Lucia County line up to Virginia. Hurricane warning information, that hasn't changed. Um, I think it's the tropical storm warnings and watches that have been extended only so the tropical storm warning um, is now from the Flagler Volusia County line as I type this in live um, up to the Savannah River and the North Carolina Virginia border to Chincoteague Virginia and Chesapeake Bay from Smith Point southwards and a tropical storm watch north of Chincoteague, Virginia to Fenwick Island, Delaware, Chesapeake Bay from Smith Point to Drum Point, Tidal Podomac south of Cobb Island. 
Orlando, um, any further thoughts on what we've been seeing from the Storm today? And do you think it's a good call that they've uh, upgraded by five miles per hour um, and the possibility for major hurricane status if you're still there? Or Sam, you could talk about that as well. And do we think it I'm will sorry, reach well, major hurricane status later tonight at this rate? Um, that's kind of on the that's kind of on the cards right now. Uh, I would say there's about a forty sixty on that on that re, on that regard. Um, in, in which in, in which favor? Uh, I would say I would not favor major hurricane status. I would say. Um, since it's still, since part of it is interacting with 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 land, um, and that's another thing I do want to. That's another thing I do want to cover. Um, I don't think it's. I think it's going to remain s steadily at a high, possibly up to a high end cat two. Um, but yes, uh, a cat cat three upgrade is can't be ruled out at this at this time. Um, mainly, we're mainly we're seeing, um, but it's really not going to. I don't think it's going to change much in the terms of impacts. We're still seeing some significant um, storm surge and um, wind and yep. localized flooding. Well, we could see storm surge of up to seven feet along the pretty much that whole coastal region that's under that storm surge warning. The threat is subsiding further south in Florida, which is great news. Um, but there is still a very long way to go with this storm, especially when you're talking about the Carolinas, which, to be honest, could get the worst U.S. impacts from the storm, couldn't they? Um, and along with that, there could be uh, rainfall amounts exceeding 10 inches on parts of the North Carolina coast and indeed into South Carolina, uh, Charleston as well. We're a bit worried about Charleston because the rainfall amounts there could get rather high along with that storm surge um, and that could get to be a pretty difficult situation. That's mainly tomorrow into Friday um, and then it will move along the coast, shoot towards the northeast eventually. Um, what we what we could say is that the uh, quicker the storm starts moving gradually the better this thing will get because a faster movement would mean the storm would pass over very much more quickly and also the rainfall totals would be a little bit less um, we're open to your questions for this hour of discussion whilst we're live on the air. You can send them in. Start your message with Force 13 all in text on the chat section um, of our YouTube stream. And uh, we already have had a few questions, so let's see if we can shed some light on them. Would the National Hurricane Center issue tropical storm watches and warnings into southern New England? Because their forecast says rain and wind. Um, southern New England. Well, I think it's a possibility, especially if the storm deviates north of forecast, but the what, what makes it uh, potentially a good thing for New England is that if the storm does make landfall earlier, it will lose much more momentum, and if it makes landfall later, say on the outer banks of North Carolina, then that suggests that it's going to move straight out to sea and not really affect the coasts up there. Now, of course, rough surf, sea conditions are going to be very poor, that's probably going to be the main thing along the coast there. It's what catches a lot of people out. And what about possible impacts from Dorian in Canada? Well, the storm is likely to turn post-tropical during its closest pass to Nova Scotia. You'll see it very shortly on the uh, on the forecast on our left, the far left-hand bar there. You can see what's expected of the storm over the next few days to stay at Cat 2 for a while and then weaken and then there it is passing Nova Scotia into Newfoundland really pushing up there it would still have hurricane force winds when it strikes there if it's an extra tropical cyclone um, uh, interesting question what if Ling Ling hits category 4 well yeah what if um, if it did then it would be a category 4 and it would be a much stronger storm and it probably will reach category 4 when we look at the intensity of it already um, so it will be a very um, 
difficult day on the southernmost Ryukyu Islands. As Fernand, by the way, on the left-hand side of our screen, really starting to get itself exposed. All the rain is channeled towards the western side of that system, now Tropical Depression. Gabrielle trying to get that imagery back. It's not currently there. And there we are with Juliet. That is was a high-end Category 3, now weakening drastically, holding on to Category 2 at the moment. But that is on a general weakening trend, moving off towards the west-northwest out at sea in the Pacific. And there is Ling Ling once again, which we are putting at 120 miles an hour Category 3, and still potentially intensifying further. So we still have Dorian on the right-hand panel of our screen, and it is still moving slowly towards the north. Let's see if we can get a latest position estimate on that right now. Dorian is, has still really been staying at a constant distance from the coast of Florida, generally around 100 miles. At the moment, it is 104 miles away from Fernandina Beach, which is the closest point of land from the storm at this point. Thing is, though, it is also only 108 miles from Sapello Island in Georgia, um, and that the, the distance is going to start to close in because the storm is still moving ever so slightly west of north at this point, and we're still waiting to see when it's going to make that northeasterly turn. Um, forecast models and the National Hurricane Center now expecting that that turn will only happen extremely late, um, either before or during a potential landfall in South Carolina and very close to Charleston at that. Just to read out the latest National Hurricane Center advisory, they are calling for it to remain now at 110 miles per hour for another 12 to 24 hours before only starting to weaken slowly. The latest National Hurricane Center forecast map is out. Um, it doesn't tell us a huge amount compared to before. It is calling for a landfall as a Category 2 in North Carolina and then continuing out to sea towards the northeast. I think Tropical Storm Watches might be issued for a large part of New England later on, but um, at the moment, just keep watching. That is still around two to three days away. And maybe we could get that onto the screen on our left-hand panel as we shift back through all that National Hurricane Center imagery and models there. Um, we're certainly ready for more automated streaming later tonight. And there is the latest cone at the top left-hand side, a little bit small in that imagery, but you can just about make out that the storm passes very close to South Carolina and makes landfall in North Carolina. Um, the cone is getting gradually smaller each time because the, the confidence of the forecast increases because the storm is likely to move more quickly. Um, and then later on in the forecast cone, at the minute they're expecting it to move over northern Nova Scotia and then over Newfoundland and turning post-tropical around that time, Saturday afternoon, evening time. Um... To read out expected rainfall totals from the storm now um, for South Carolina expecting to be a little over 10 inches and in North Carolina we're expecting around 8 to 10 inches generally in some isolated locations it could be more. And the flash flooding potential is high along large parts of South and North Carolina generally from Charleston through to Jacksonville, North Carolina, we're looking at a high chance, high risk of flash flooding. So if you are in a flood prone area, it could be a very dangerous situation. Um, whether it will rival Florence, not sure at this point, but it will be a potentially dangerous situation, If especially if uh, you don't take the preparations, which you should really have done by this point. But that is the latest from the National Hurricane Center. The next update, I think they will still be doing hourly updates and their next intermediate advisory follows at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and a complete advisory will follow at 11. Uh, let's see what questions we have at this point then. The odds of Gabrielle coming to Florida. <laughs> I've got to chuckle. 
there is the track for Gabrielle on the top left hand side or the central top side of the screen there. Yep, Gabrielle is not coming to Florida. I can tell you that much with certainty because Dorian will make sure that it shifts further east. Um, same too with that other invest that's near Bermuda right now. What is interesting in the latest forecast for Gabrielle is that they are calling for it to become a hurricane now on Monday, late on on that forecast, right over the central North Atlantic. Not going to affect anywhere at all. Um, and at the moment it's at 50 miles per hour already in the eastern Atlantic. Not a soul is going to be impacted by that storm, I'm pleased to say. Going to remain well out at sea. Now Juliet underneath there as well is also going to remain a sea-bound cyclone. And 12E has also formed. I don't have the latest track for that, I'm afraid. But um, it is around. There is the latest from the National Hurricane Center in terms of the outlook. A moderate chance for that system that's just moving off Africa right now. That originally had a high chance. It's now down to moderate. Um, Long-range models were suggesting that that system would have be was going to become a really major hurricane out at sea. We should still watch and be vigilant for that possibility, but models have really backed off in the last few runs. So that's another wait and see game and the models may come back on board with that at a later date. We do see the models come in and out with that. So that is something long range to look for. Fernand obviously a tropical depression now, that's going to be off the books very soon. Gabrielle going to remain out at sea, that other invest will remain out at sea. So once Dorian goes the Atlantic will have at least a week of recuperation before potentially another system arrives. Eastern Pacific, you can see 12E way over there now. It is in the Central Pacific. We can't rule out a potential Hawaii threat from that system, but at the moment it looks like it will pass south of the islands and probably move all the way out towards the international dateline. And in the Western Pacific, you've got those three systems, Tropical Storm 14, Typhoon Ling Ling, and the remnants of Kajiki still going at this moment. So I will throw it back on the left hand side to imagery of Ling Ling and you can send in your comments and questions throughout this stream. Um, it's just me at this moment uh, giving you the latest information and keeping the graphics up to date at the same time would you believe. Um, and let's see what questions we can take right now. So do we think the two Atlantic invests will form? Well they've both got a moderate chance as I said just now. Um, 92L is really on a knife edge of whether that one will form. I personally think the one that coming on Africa, Africa will get a designation of some sort. Whether it becomes a tropical depression or a fully fledged storm remains to be seen, but I think most models are on board with a depression at least um, before it starts to weaken. All right. Um, how much time does Dorian have left to strengthen before it moves off the North Carolina coast? So this is the real crunch point when we talk about Dorian at this time because uh, it's really entering that phase now where it's got to intensify now if it's going to do it ever again. Um, latest model runs suggesting that it will clip the eastern tip of North Carolina but the National Hurricane Center have a landfall further inland just a little bit. But yeah, the models, um, they're actually slightly backing off um, I'm intrigued to see. They have backed off a little bit on that secondary peak. None of the models at this point are predicting that category 3 peak anymore like they were yesterday and earlier today actually. Um, so, well, maybe, but there's, at the moment what we're seeing right in front of us is that Dorian has strengthened a little bit. It's now back up to 110 miles an hour, which is just shy of category 3 status verified by recon and by satellite appearance. I must say satellite appearance has been of the mid-range category 3 level for quite some time actually during the course of today but recon have it lower and their observations take precedent. Uh, so yeah um, models they don't really call for that secondary peak anymore but if it was to happen it would be within the next 24 hours and then weakening trend very slow unfortunately would start to occur up to the three day mark. So we're talking this storm being at least a Category 2 um, 
No, I'm reading that wrong, sorry. Up to the 48 hour mark, it remains a category two, then it drops to a category one. Although some outside chance that the storm could weaken more quickly than that, some models suggesting that maybe it will start to weaken quicker. Um, so that is something to watch out for. If it does start to weaken quicker, that's obviously great news. But really, the models can't tell us whether it's going to weaken slowly or quickly. But by the 60 hour, 72 hour mark, it will still be a category one. And then it will drop off a bit more of a cliff after that, according to quite a lot of the models. That will be when it's cleared the outer banks. It will looks like it might start weakening quite a lot more. And maybe down to tropical storm status before it turns post-tropical. So that's pretty much Dorian in a nutshell. Um, and let's just see if there's any warning information that I ought to read out at this point because that of course is very important. The storm is just just about 100, 105 miles off the coast and it would appear, um, no, nothing much, just that some flood warnings still in effect in Florida. A river flood warning remains in effect for the St. John's River at Astor. Um, they are still expecting moderate flooding to occur that is currently occurring and forecasted as well. Also to point out, tropical storm warnings occurring for many places inland as well. Places like Statesboro, Sylvania, um, Orangeburg, moving into South Carolina there, and even hurricane warnings extending quite far inland as well. Not hugely, but, um, but tropical storm warnings for places like Florence, uh, Lumberton, Whiteville moving into North Carolina um, just seeing where Fayetteville is in all of this I think they'll be under a tropical storm warning that's where our US HQ is run by Tim um, and just to look at some flooding related warnings for the area there are flood related warnings for parts of the Carolinas now and flash flood watches also I'm just gonna get these together and relate them to you relay them to you um, and all kinds of rip current statements, beach hazard statements, those kinds of things. So, forecast flooding changed from minor to moderate severity for the following rivers in North Carolina. The Northeast Cape Fear near Burgor affecting Pender County. Um, Pender, by the way, had the highest chance of tropical storm force winds out of anywhere this season according to Force 13's um, an, uh, forecast at the start of the year. So it looks like they are going to get, at the very minimum, tropical storm force winds um, and potential for flooding there right now as well. So that's forecast flooding there for the northeast Cape Fear near Burgor from Saturday morning until further notice. Um, flood stage is 10 feet. They're expecting 14.4. Uh, the flood, uh, another flood warning for the Whackamore at Conway affecting Horry County in North Carolina, um, I believe that is. Um, so people with interests along that river should take the necessary precautions to protect life and property. Additional information is available at weather.gov forward slash ILM under the rivers and lakes link. Um, expecting a flood stage. Uh, the flood stage is 11 feet, expecting 12.4. Elsewhere, uh, flash flood watch. Heavy rains from Hurricane Dorian to bring the threat of flash flooding to eastern North Carolina tomorrow through Friday. Hurricane Dorian continues to move up the southeast U.S. coast and will track just offshore or along the North Carolina coast tomorrow through Friday. Very heavy rainfall is expected with areas of 4 to 8 inches expected over the coastal plain and then further east and up to the coast 8 to 12 inches of rain are expected with isolated heavier amounts reaching 15 inches or more. Flash flooding will be possible across all eastern North Carolina but higher chances of flash flooding will develop where the heaviest rain bands from Dorian set up. Now that is the thing with this. Uh, we don't really know where those heavy rain bands will set up, so we can't really say exactly where pinpoint position where the heaviest rainfall will be. So flash flood watch continues for a portion of East North Carolina. Coastal on slow, Duplin, Green, Inland on slow, Jones, Lenoir, Martin and Pitt from Thursday through Friday afternoon. Um, 
and I think this is another one as well. Same thing, really. Um, Beaufort, East Carteret, Hatteras Island, Mainland Dare, Mainland Hyde, Northern Craven, Northern Outer Banks, Ocracoke Island, Pamlico, South Southern Craven, Tyrrell, Washington, and West Carteret from Thursday morning through Friday evening, and another one there as well. Heavy rainfall associated with the storm will overspread portions of central North Carolina near and between US Route 1 and Interstate 95 on Thursday and then continue into early Friday. Storm total rainfall amounts will range from 1 to 4 inches with the lighter totals expected to the west. Heaviest rain is expected to fall across eastern portions of Hoke, Harnett and Wake and Franklin counties and where amounts will potentially reach 3 to 4 inches. And also um, Cumberland, Edgecombe, Johnston, uh, Sampson, Wayne and Wilson also will expect heavy rainfall, 6 to 8 inches potentially, and loads of other places here, northeast North Carolina and Virginia. In northeast North Carolina we're talking Bertie, Camden, Chowan, Eastern Currituck, Gates, Hartford, Northampton, Pascatank, Perkimon and Western Currituck. I'm sorry about these pronunciations. They're not familiar to me. I've been used to talking about Florida for three days. Um, also, more places uh, in Virginia, Chesapeake, Hampton, uh, Isle of Wight, Newport News, Norfolk and Portsmouth, Northampton, Southampton, Suffolk, Virginia Beach and York from Thursday evening through Friday evening for those areas as well. And finally, on this very, very long list, Flash flood watch continuing for portions of southeast North Carolina and northeast South Carolina. Um, so we're talking Bladen, coastal Brunswick, coastal New Hanover, coastal Pender, Columbus, inland Brunswick, inland New Hanover, inland Pender, and Robeson. In northeast South Carolina, central Horry, coastal Georgetown, coastal Horry, Darlington, Dillon, Florence, inland Georgetown, Marion, Marlboro, northern Horry, and Williamsburg from 8 p.m. EDT this evening through Friday morning, expecting up to 10 inches of rain. So flash flood warnings, uh, flash flood watches, sorry, all over the place in the Carolinas into Virginia. Um, and on top of that, rip current statements, obviously the hurricane warnings um, extending up a long way up the North Carolina coast now. We're really waiting for the storm to arrive in many of those locations. Let me just check the radar. Um, there are significant amounts of rain now reaching the coast, um, the Wilmington area got a few yellows moving through there at this point um, so let's just see here one hour rainfall totals are reaching uh, not that much just yet we're talking about a quarter of an inch in the last hour around the Wilmington area um, elsewhere Myrtle Beach is getting trace uh, amounts Charleston uh, maybe just above a trace at the minute uh, but there is some stronger bands just off the shore near um, near Wilmington where they're getting probably up to about one inch per hour but we won't see the really heavy rainfall parts until at least later on tonight um, late hours of this evening or early hours tomorrow morning before it really sets up and strikes those areas let's just look further south to see what rain rates we're getting along the coast of Georgia and Florida uh, still not huge at the moment last hour in the um, where are we there in the Beaufort area just along the coast there we're just about getting to a quarter of an inch an hour along the coast of Georgia about the same about a quarter of an inch an hour the main band just offshore at this point that could still move onwards along the coast of Georgia but that is the current situation just looking down to the Jacksonville area just waiting for this thing to load so I can tell you whilst we wait for that there uh, okay looking at it again here now yeah, um, interesting that the radar isn't indicating huge amounts of rain at the moment, um, even in the storm's inner eye wall on the western side. We're only looking at about rain rates of one and a half inches an hour. That is obviously quite a lot, but that's right near the center of the storm, which isn't going anywhere near land at the minute. We're talking only about 0.1 to 0.3 inches per hour along the very coastal regions of Georgia and in Florida it's even less than that according to latest National Weather Service radar. Storm total rainfall amounts, um, it was the areas we were talking about yesterday on the stream, the uh, I-4 corridor really got the, the very high amounts of rain 
Um, still not huge. We're talking four, five inches that have occurred along that area. Orlando, even though they got a few interesting bands, um, they only got somewhere around one inch of rain at the most. Um, the highest amount in Florida towards the north is around the Palm Coast area, which got maybe eight inches of rainfall in one or two isolated spots, generally around five. But the heaviest of the rain has remained off the shore. Um, <clears throat> looking at Melbourne, uh, rainfall amounts there during this storm have been maybe one inch of rain. Um, off the coast, it has been very high. Uh, you just look about 30, 40 miles off the coast near Daytona Beach, you're looking at 10 inches of rain or more that have occurred so far. So rainfall amounts have been much lower than what they really could have been if the storm had moved just a little bit further west. It has constantly been around 100 miles off the coast of the Florida coast and now the Georgia coast, about 105 miles off at this point. What I'm worried about is that the storm is still moving north um, and there's no real sign of it. It's just bending too slowly and at the minute it looks like it's going to get pretty close to the coast of South Carolina and deliver those tropical storm and even hurricane force winds by tomorrow. All right, been talking for a very long time. That's because there's just me here at this point, uh, but we'll continue with that. Um, send your messages in. Start your message with Force 13 all in text on the chat uh, on our YouTube stream at this moment. And uh, Let's see what we've got. There have been quite a lot. Um, so let's see. Um, just catching up here. Dorian, possible strengthening. Well, that's actually a statement. There is no question mark at the end of that question. But um, yes, Dorian, not possible, but actual strengthening because the National Hurricane Center did upgrade it from 105 miles an hour at the last update to 110 miles per hour at the latest update 37 minutes ago. Um, questions about, oh, uh, how many waves behind Gabrielle is a question that I get there. Well, um <laughs> I wish I knew. There could be quite a few. Um, you know, the, the, the tropical wave season is well and truly in full flux in the Atlantic. Um, so there's obviously that one that's coming up behind. And then there could be quite a few more. Uh, not many of them actually develop into tropical cyclones. So it is very natural to see these waves coming off. And the wave season sort of shuts down maybe the end of the month or into early October. Um... What will be the effects in New York City? Well, they have an 11% chance of tropical storm force winds from Dorian at this time. So, a 1 in 9 chance, if you fancy those chances, for tropical storm force winds in New York. Um, rainfall estimates are likely to be low. I would say it's probably just going to be a gusty day up there, or uh, whenever the storm makes its closest past, probably going to be Friday. Um... So it shouldn't be too bad. Obviously, anywhere along that northeastern coast, don't go into the water because it is going to be potentially dangerous. People um, get killed quite often, unfortunately, from these events um, by venturing out into the water or being near the coast. Um, and that's how a lot of indirect deaths happen from storms that don't even affect land. I've been trying to wrestle with the imagery for Fernand and Gabrielle, but they're not working at this moment, so I'm sorry about that. So there's Juliet again on the left-hand side, Category 2, and Ling Ling, which is our other main feature at this point, which we're continuing to watch. That one is intensifying quite rapidly at this moment. You can see it there on the imagery. We, we went with 120 miles per hour on our last advisory, um, on our last forecast update that went out on the YouTube channel just over an hour ago. Pressure estimate of 945 millibars. Um, questions about the death toll in the Bahamas? I'm not privy to that kind of information at this time. Suffice to say that this storm was absolutely calamitous to those northern two islands um, and it's going to be a huge rebuilding process and many lives and families will have been destroyed in those northern parts of those islands so I think we should all spare a thought for 
the people of the northernmost Bahamas. Um, and does Dorian pose a high threat to Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada? Um, well, it's going to be a potentially strong extratropical cyclone. You just saw it blow through there on the left-hand panel on the forecast. Um, so, yes, a potential threat. I mean, they've had these kinds of things before. Although I must say, um, I can't. It's been a while since a storm really blew through there at quite a bit of intensity. Um, Igor was one of the worst back in 2010. That struck, I think, as a tropical Category 1 hurricane, or it was just turning post-tropical when it made landfall in Newfoundland. Um, and that one caused quite a bit of damage, one of the most damaging, actually, for that region. Um, this one could do somewhere close to that, probably not exceeding Igor, um, but certainly will have some power. Do we think Dorian can reach Category 3 status again? Is a question that I get there. Um, yes, I definitely could reach Category 3 status. You just saw at the bottom of the screen then, just ticked over. 50% were giving it in... Uh, in the, less, in the rest of the storm's life, um, it's certainly got a chance. It would have to happen tonight, most likely. The further, the thing is with this storm, the further out to sea it is from the coast, the it will position itself more over the Gulf Stream, so that favors intensification. If it does move closer to the coast, it just about gets out of that main line of that Gulf Stream. So the sea surface temperatures and the uh, heat content it decreases quite a bit more. And the temperature has, uh, and the storm has less of a chance of intensifying by then. So, funny enough, if it does move closer to the coast and land interaction as well, it has a much bigger chance of destroying itself. But this is a high end category two, and if it did strike and came very close to a landfall in North and South Carolina, the effects could be disastrous, and flooding could be a serious issue for that area. Um, did our season forecast predict anything near to Dorian? Well, at the start of the year, we were calling for... Well, North and South Carolina were really very much in our sights for significant impacts um, because we were expecting a storm track um, s sort of like Dorian but further east because we didn't really have the Bahamas as a real certainty for a big impact this year what we also had down for a significant impact was the gulf coast um barry didn't really do that uh, but it could still happen this year certainly be vigilant for a potential gulf coast storm um but at the moment no signs of that just yet so it's just watching and waiting for many of those areas but certainly no need for alarm even though we did forecast that early on it was just a projection um Let's see, any more questions that we're getting right now? Do tag us because everything else is just white noise to me right now. Will Northern Virginia get just heavy rain or maybe winds? Um, well, Northern Virginia, hmm. I'll just have to take a look back at the National Hurricane Center forecast for that region. Um, well, they... It, <laughs> If you're talking around the coastal regions, yes, but if you're talking inland Virginia, um, further north, near West Virginia and near Maryland, then probably not. So maybe give us a city uh, to go by and I might be able to answer that question in more detail. Um, chances <laughs> chances of bears beating the Packers tomorrow. I know very little about that other than it's going on, but... Um, I don't follow the US sports, I'm sorry about that. Um, but you can tell us about any more questions that you have coming in at this point if you want to know more about the Storm Dorian um, as it continues northwards in a northerly direction at this point, moving at about 7 miles per hour. Do we think the two invests in the Atlantic will form? That is a question that we did already get earlier on in tonight's stream in the hour. Um, well, I, my personal opinion... 92L is really running out of time. I'm sort of on the fence, but leaning towards no. And the other system that's coming off Africa, um, that I would give a decent chance of getting to a tropical depression. Tropical storm up in the air. Um, and this is what we were talking about. Could have been a major hurricane later down the line. There is still the potential for that, but models did back off earlier today. 
Um, Will Dorian be a retired Storm? Um, well, I mean, we never like to speculate about those kinds of things, but from what we've seen on damage, if Hurricane Joaquin can get retired for sinking a boat with 34 fatalities, then this Storm will definitely get retired for much worse than it did, that much worse damage than it route across the Bahamas. Um, if Dorian stays out at sea, is there a possibility of it hitting Atlantic Canada as a Category 2? That is an interesting question, actually, and I would say yes to that answer. Um, if it does keep hold of its intensity for longer, it certainly could. If it positions itself directly over the warmest points of the Gulf Stream, it could still be a Category 2 by the time it gets there. And I don't know what then the last time that would have been, apart from Hurricane Juan in 2003. There might have been some others in between that I don't recall at this moment in time um we're talking about okay uh that comment that came back to me mini um living more inland in northern virginia about washington dc uh, those chances then are pretty low um we're looking washington only about a seven percent chance of tropical storm force winds there uh looking at rainfall for that region yeah rainfall is going to be very low as well much less than an inch so um, yeah, Washington DC area and in Northern Virginia, not too much will go on from this storm. Um, you're lucky that I caught this one from Sky Weather. Do tag us in future. Do we think Dorian can get to Nova Scotia as a Category 1? Well, yes, I think that is pretty much going to happen. Could there be warnings issued in southern New England? I think that's quite possible. Tropical storm warnings could go into effect there if the storm deviates a bit further north. Although I think there will just be watches mainly. I could be wrong. Um, how is it that some seasons have the first storm as a Category 5? Well, yeah, that has happened. Hurricane Allen in 1980, Category 5, um, that was an, um, well, yeah, we, we, these, these usually happened in seasons where we didn't really get any early season activity and they usually tend to be weak storms or 1992 got away with it because I think it had three depressions before Hurricane Andrew formed and became a Category 5. It does sometimes happen. It just depends on how slow a season we get. It happens all over the world. Sometimes happens in the Eastern Pacific, although it's much more rare. Amanda almost did it in 2014. Ava did do it in 1973, being a June Category 5. And in the Western Pacific, it can often happen there as well, sometimes really early on in the season, in January or February. Um, Nipartak did it in 2016. Uh, that was an extremely slow start. It was the first storm of the season to form just about in the month of July. Um, so that was another instance it can happen anywhere um, but it's just just how it goes sometimes uh, and sometimes the last storm of the season can be a category 5 as well um, I can't quite recall when the last time that was it usually doesn't happen um, when you look through the trends in the more active seasons the most intense storm either happens um, pretty early on but not the first or pretty late on but not quite the last um, do we think Gabrielle will reach hurricane status? Well, now the National Hurricane Center do, so I can't disagree with them, really. They're calling for a Category 5, uh, <laughs> Category 1, not a Category 5, don't worry. They're calling for a Category 1 on Day 5 for Gabrielle. Don't worry about that. It's not going to be a Category 5 in the Central Atlantic. Where would Dorian rank in the top 100 Category 5 hurricanes? Well... I don't think we could speculate on that just yet. Will there ever been a will there ever be a hurricane more powerful than Sandy or Hurricane Camille? Well, those two storms are completely different. First of all, Sandy was enormous, and that is what did most of the damage. Its wind field was absolutely staggering. Um, very unusual circumstances that, are, that surrounded Hurricane Sandy. It was barely tropical after it passed the Bahamas, yet it still stayed as a hurricane all the way up until about, what was it, 12 hours before striking New Jersey as a Category 1 hurricane equivalent. It was crazy. Um, remember tracking it very well back in 2012. It was our first full year of tracking storms on Force 13. Um, so, I mean, you know... Once we've seen something, then surely that confirms that the precedent is there for that to happen again. And with Camille, a very strong storm back in 1969, that was completely different. Category 5, straight into the coast, 
um, of Mississippi. Um, extremely powerful storm. That can quite easily happen again. Katrina could have done that if it kept itself together. Mercifully, it didn't. Still brought a Category 5 storm surge and destroyed whole communities in the New Orleans area. Um, all right, let's see what else we have here. What was the first ever retired name storm? We're getting a lot of variation in the questions tonight. Um, I'm going to have to think back here to try and think what was the first retired name storm. It could have been Hurricane Hazel, or perhaps it might have been... I can't remember if Carol of 1953 got retired or not, but Hazel in 54, I'm pretty sure, did. Um, so that is... Those are one of the first storm names to get retired in the Atlantic Basin. Naming started in 1950. Um, do we think it's going to hit the New York State area? Well, I was talking about New York City, 11% chance. Uh, it is valid to talk about New York State as well because you've got Long Island. They have slightly higher chances, um, up to about 16 17% across the island. Um, still statistically not huge chances of tropical storm force winds. We're mainly worried about rip currents there, um, sea conditions, and if people aren't cautious, then... Uh, we could be looking at some issues along the coast there because sometimes we can see indirect fatalities occur from these storms as they blow past. In all likelihood, anywhere north of Atlantic City will probably not get particularly bad conditions with the exception of Cape Cod and parts of southeastern Massachusetts which have over a 30% chance of tropical storm force winds. So New York, Boston, Philadelphia... Um, Baltimore, Washington, all these big places aren't really likely to get tropical storm force winds. Very low chances. We'll probably get some wind gusts going into the 30s in miles per hour. Maybe even up towards tropical storm force if the storm deviates northward. But at the minute, very low chances of tropical storm force winds for those major population centers. Um... We have some more questions now as well. This is basically question and answer uh, here with you for another 10 minutes. Will there ever be a Category 5 landfall in South Carolina or in Bermuda? Well, that is an interesting question. Um, theoretically, I think a Category 5 could happen in South Carolina. It would be extremely rare. I don't think we've ever, we can't have ever witnessed one. Um, it would be extremely rare. This one isn't certainly going to do anything like that. Um, or in Bermuda. Um, Bermuda would be extremely difficult, probably more so than South Carolina. Um, Bermuda, yeah, extremely rare for that to happen. I don't know. I couldn't put a number on it and say, you know, once in an X hundred year event for this thing because we just don't have enough data going back through the history books, which is something that, I certainly find as a cyclone historian to be quite um, frustrating at times because we can't really, you know, 160 years is still a lot of data on these storms that we go back to for the Atlantic, but um, so many other things could have happened in years gone by that we don't know about for obvious reasons. Um, let's see, what else do we have now? Not too much in the way only why is hurricane dorian headed due west it isn't it's heading due north um and just to get see if i can get a latest indication of just exactly uh, the storm's direction it is still just west of north it's at 348 degrees on the compass so that is just about west of north still pretty much north but still just that slight westward component to it um and that's why I'm pretty worried about South and North Carolina, which have a very high chance of tropical storm force winds and a much increasing chance of hurricane force winds. I can tell you on the latest imagery over in the Western Pacific, Ling Ling is looking even better. The eye temperature now is up to uh, at least, oh my goodness, 17 degrees Celsius on the latest cloud top eye temperature imagery and the cloud tops to the north are looking really fantastic blow ups into the minus 80s still a rumor there on the southern side that the eye might still be open not completely closed off so i don't think we can really go above category 3 status on this just yet but it is really looking very good when it comes to the eye temperature 
and those massive cloud tops on the northern side. Just to explain this panel, divided into two, Dorian live imagery on the right hand side of the uh, screen, Ling Ling there, those two panels showing the storm in visible when the sun comes up shortly, and infrared on the bottom part of your screen. Um, that one is really developing at this point, and if that eye wall closes, we could be talking super typhoon um, as it moves through those Japanese islands. At the minute, we're running with 120 miles per hour and a pressure of 945, deepening quite significantly that storm. Just to, just checking again, see if I can get a new temperature on that. Yeah, 18 degrees Celsius inside that eye already in Ling Ling. That is quite something. Bearing in mind that Dorian peaked with an eye temperature of 22 when it was 185 miles an hour. Wow. Um, let's see if there's some more questions. Um, will it hit Nova Scotia still tropical? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. It could still hit Nova Scotia as a tropical storm. Could still be as a Category 1. How long, how long does it take to animate the hurricane seasons? A very uh, off-focus question there, but we'll take it. Um, it can vary. Generally, ge a general rule of thumb for the animations is about one hour per storm of uh, animating. So quite often it can take several days to do fully packed seasons. Uh, those who aren't familiar with what we do away from storm coverage we regularly do hurricane animations um, of seasons gone by um, in general and individual storms and in individual storm animations as well um, but most of our work is storm updates um, what impacts does this storm have as an extra tropical cyclone how does it transition well the storm loses that heat energy from the seas as it continues to gain latitude it speeds up the convective clouds start to fade away um, and start to space out further away from the storm the wind profile changes um, the winds end up getting further and further away from the center of the uh, storm what it would be the eye um, and eventually it just becomes a cold core system as it continues northeast in this case with dorian uh, and extratropical cyclones typically carry less rainfall, much less rainfall. They can still carry strong winds, um, and sometimes they have a circulation, but not always as well. Uh, will there be a huge ridge in the Atlantic after Dorian and Gabrielle? I haven't actually checked that, but my guess would be that there probably is quite a strong Bermuda high. Um, as there tends to be at this time of year. So I would have to go and look at that at some time in the future. Why does latitude change the pressure but not longitude? It's an interesting question. Well, that, well, I can tell you something. Longitude can sort of change the storm's pressure. It's not that it's the actual latitude longitude um, because what's true is that the general atmospheric pressure around the storm environmental pressure is lower the further north you go the closer towards the poles um, but is also a little bit lower in the bigger basins the western pacific in particular and the indian ocean than in places like the atlantic so that's why you can get tropical storms of a thousand and nine millibars in the main development region of the atlantic whereas in the western pacific tropical storm status starts probably around below 1000 millibars so that's about 10 millibars of difference there as to what gets you what intensity and that uh, applies further up the wind scale as well um let's see here more questions will there be a tropical storm watch or warning in new jersey i think they might put up a tropical storm watch in new jersey maybe uh maybe when the storm's just about to finish up with north carolina maybe um also do we think do we think this season is going to be bad well we've just seen it it's already bad um dorian has completely destroyed the northern bahamas um it's been an extremely sobering last few days whilst we've been doing the streaming i really don't think it's hit many of us on the team because we've been so busy covering the storm just exactly what we did that there's going to be one point in a few days time where we're just going to take a step back and just say wow 
that just happened. It's been a disastrous week for the Atlantic Basin and we wouldn't wish this to happen upon anyone um, along these shores. Um, will the, Oh, here we had that question. Will it become a Category 3 again? And also, Melissa, um, being very kind and generous, thank you so much for your support during this storm cycle. It's been a extremely um, exhausting experience for everyone involved and anything that we do receive in the way of monetary support we uh, do put back into the work that we do this sort of thing wouldn't have been possible otherwise and it will continue to get better each and every time we take anyone's thoughts and suggestions on board in how we can make our coverage better all the time and that's how we continue to evolve um, what was the earlier question? Will it become Category 3 again? Yeah, uh, well, possibly. Uh, I certainly have it, well, definitely on the fence with that right now. There's a 50% chance, according to what we're putting on our screen, that this could become a Category 3. How come hurricanes don't come to Connecticut? Is it because the water's cold? Well, a lot of older storms. We seem to have a period... 1930s through the 50s where there was quite a lot of storms that affected the northeast most particularly the new england hurricane of 1938 was a category five at peak i believe and struck the long island connecticut area as a category two i think it was or maybe even borderline category three imagine that a storm at dorian's intensity right now striking long island and connecticut well it did happen back in 1938 it was an extremely destructive storm so it goes to show that kind of thing can happen, but as we've seen, it is pretty rare. Although I really think that that area is sort of overdue for another impact like that um, further north. We're riding our luck all the time as we watch these storms along the U.S. East Coast. And how much damage do we expect to Miyakojima in Japan? Well, um, these Japanese islands, the southern Ryukyu Islands, looking at Ling Ling now on the left-hand side, get storms like this pretty much all the time. They are quite used to it. Um, obviously, the precautions still need to be heeded, of course. Typhoon conditions. Um, I assume the building codes are extremely good over there um, because sometimes Category 4s, high-end Category 4 slash Category 5s can blow through there. This could be another extremely strong storm. The bulk of it, or at least the central part of the storm, should miss Miyakojima, but it will pass just towards the east and could deliver major hurricane conditions to that island. Um... And what is expected for the Koreas? Well, yes, there could be significant impacts there as well from this storm. Ling Ling, it is likely to expand. It could strike Korea still as a typhoon, western parts of the country, South Korea, and also into North Korea as well. Um, that could be a difficult situation there. That's in a few days' time. There's another storm that could strike Japan next week. Could be a typhoon as it does so as well. Probably will be a small system. That's 14W already as a system. Uh, JMA have it as a tropical depression. I think that is still the case. I haven't looked recently. Just see if we can get that news. It is still a tropical depression on the Japanese Meteorological Agency. We've got to finish up now. There's a tropical weather bulletin coming up at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to leave you with these automated graphics. Thanks for joining us. We'll have more discussion on here as well. The live stream will keep running. And we'll be back again with more discussion 9 p.m. Eastern Time after that Tropical Weather Bulletin airs at 8. Until then, thanks for watching. See you again soon.